Hello and welcome to today's episode. I am joined by my good friend, Dr. Mary Wild, and we are going to be talking all things physician burnout today. This is such a great topic because around 63% of physicians suffer from symptoms of burnout, and this affects not just your personal life, but your professional life. And about three in 10 practices have a physician leave because of burnout. So this is a really important place if you are a practice manager, if you are a physician within a practice or in a hospital system, it's really important that we are focusing on our physician wellness. My guest today is Dr. Mary Wild, and she is an integrative pediatrician, author, podcast, TEDx speaker, and mom of eight. She's the creator of Resilience School, which is an online program for kids and families, families struggling with anxiety. As a physician, keynote speaker, and conference and retreat host, and we're going to share a little bit about that. Mary's got a great retreat coming up to help physicians begin to bring in some energy and restoration. Mary has helped thousands of parents and professionals on the path to greater wellness and resilience. Welcome to the show, Mary. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. So Mary, I know that you've had your own personal journey and experience through burnout, and you've got some really great insights because there was something that you mentioned that I thought, oh, that is so important. And that was how we can be most susceptible to burnout in the areas where we feel the deepest commitment. So Mary, what has your burnout experience been in the world? Yes. And I think it's important to acknowledge that we all have our own story and that we can come in and out of burnout and be on the edge of it. And, and so it's just good to be educated about it so we can recognize it early. But my burnout story isn't only in the professional realm, but kind of the whole entire life package realm. So I sometimes joke that if caregiving was an extreme sport, I'd be like an ultra marathoner at certain times in my life because, you know, um, there was a time when I was a mom of seven, pregnant with my eighth child, working part time as a hospitalist at a local hospital and the caregiver for my elderly mom who had suffered two strokes. And so she needed total care, like turning, changing, tube feeding and all this. And amazingly, you know, things were actually, I was, I was keeping my head above water mostly. Um, but I just remember this really pivotal moment where I was reaching over my mom in her hospital bed at my house and, and she perhaps in confusion or desperation, I'm not sure, but she reached out and like started pulling my hair and digging her nails into my arm with the one arm of hers that worked. And it just was so jarring and, and a really um, difficult moment to have the person who had nurtured me and the person that I had dedicated a lot in my current situation to helping and and um, and focusing on and caring for to have them you know harming me and and you know I, I had to just run out of the room and I remember just flopping down on on the bed you know in, in an uh, opposite bedroom and and just you know, crying. And it was just really, really difficult. And it, as I have thought about physician burnout, I think about how we also have gone into medicine with such dedication. And, you know, we all take the Hippocratic oath, you know, first do no harm. But yet it is so jarring when the very system that, you know, we are there and have dedicated ourselves to is actually harming us. And so I think it's just really important to have ways to recognize burnout and then also ways to acknowledge when, um, when we need to take some steps to get ourselves out of burnout as well. Mary, that's a strong and powerful story. And when you were sharing that, you know, the, 
the quote that you know, I remember hearing so often when I was in the hospital was, you can't heal the caregiver. And we sometimes as caregivers are so busy trying to make sure that everybody else is okay, we forget to care for ourselves. And you have this beautiful quote that I just love that you shared. And I'd love you to kind of share what the quote is, but then also kind of speak, what does this mean to you? How did this resonate? Why did it stand out for you, Mary? So I found this quote by the author E.B. White, who said, I wake, he said something like this. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing it a little bit to shorten it up, but I wake every morning with the conflict of whether to save the world or to savor it. And that makes it hard to plan my day. And I think sometimes as physicians, we have this really idealistic mentality. We're wanting to serve and take care of the people around us. And sometimes when we're in a broken hospital system or medical system, we don't feel like it's working, like we're set up to deliver the care that we have wanted to give. Um, and because of the intense demands in medicine often, we are taught to live in a state of self-denial. I remember as a resident, you know, just putting off these needs to for sleep and food and, you know, even needing to go to the bathroom, that you just kind of shut down your awareness of that. And as a pediatrician, we would call that a sensory processing disorder. You know, there's this interoceptive sense of being able to be in tune with your needs and um, we sometimes turn that off because we're working so hard in the service of others. So that quote by Evie White really, really spoke to that conflict of sometimes we're trying to save the world and we forget that we need to care for ourselves so it can be sustainable. And there is the magic word. That is the word that I talk about so often. What is sustainable? And, you know, when you talk about sensory processing disorder, it's just like, okay, you know, we, we so easily focus on the top five senses and, and, yes. but there's seven that we really have to consider. And that's the vestibular, our balance and then the proprioception. How do we recognize and, and, and feel our, our presence and our own body spatially in the world? And those are the areas that are most impacted in burnout. And in my global spicy research study over the last three years, we've had participants in over 93 countries and over half a million people. And the data says 100% of respondents say that they experience a heightened sense of sensory input during burnout. And we are, you're talking about something so important, Mary, we are like taught to suppress our own needs especially as caregivers. You I mean, think about when you go through residency, any internships or, you know, shadowing that you do, it's like, oh, suck it up, buttercup, keep pushing through. This is the hours. This is where we work. This is how it goes. So what are some of those early warning signs that you want people to kind of start to, you know, if you're a healthcare provider, if you're a physician, what are some of the things, the early warning signs that we should be looking for? So I like to go back to the Maslach inventory of burnout. And the main three areas that this measures are first, emotional exhaustion. And this also can um, encompass some physical exhaustion and mental exhaustion, but it's especially the emotional exhaustion. Um, then also depersonalization. And that is when we start you know, putting off our own needs, but also that we start kind of having some resentment and cynicism towards the humanness of others as well. And so when we start getting more jaded, we start um, not enjoying our patients as much. And um, this is a sign that it's, it's not that our personality is changing or that the world is all dark and bleak, but sometimes it's just that we are exhausted and we are in a place of burnout. We need to stop and renew. The third area is the area of 
personal accomplishment and how we relate to that. And, and often in a state of burnout, we're really feeling a low sense of personal accomplishment. We're not feeling like we're making a difference. We're not feeling rewards of our efforts. And so when you combine those three things of being emotionally exhausted, being cynical and jaded, and you know less in touch with our own humanness and the humanness of others, and then feeling like everything is sort of futile, that is a recipe for feeling very unwell and, and being burned out. Oh my goodness. We are talking about the burnout cocktail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is the burnout cocktail. And it's, you know, I love that the first one that you talk about, and I am definitely steeped in some Maslow's myself, mm -hmm. but as we look at that, you know, we also have to look at our nourishment and that's one of the things that, you know, we are denying that we've talked about before. And in my global spicy research study, the number one unmet nourishment need is emotional safety and not emotional safety so much with other people. The bigger element was feeling emotionally safe within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so how you're talking about that showing up, that's a big one. So what, how did those three things show up? In your life, Mary, how did you recognize those? And, and maybe how are you recognizing those in other physicians to kind of help bring this conversation about more often? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, definitely when I had that, um, that moment of decision, that pivotal moment with my mom, it was one of those moments where I was just feeling like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I don't have the bandwidth. And and it's kind of feeling like all hope is lost. I, you know, my, my actions are futile. And, and that was really a difficult moment. And, and I see that too. I work a lot with parents in the burnout space and helping them recognize burnout because across the board, when we're in a burnout state, we're not performing at our optimal performance. Um, I've heard it said, you know, the question isn't, are you, have I done enough work today? It's have I rested enough that I can show up and do my most loving and important work. And so performance always is, is influenced when we are emotionally exhausted, when, you know, we feel jaded and, when we don't have hope and, and see the fruits of our efforts, like we've kind of lost our why. So, the, and they're very early signs. And in um, the, the Maslach in inventory, there, there are some different layers of it. So sometimes maybe you only are experiencing some emotional exhaustion and um, maybe you're ex experiencing some anxiety and depression, or maybe you're only seeing some cynicism or maybe you're only feeling like you're not seeing results from your work and those are just a sign to just start paying attention because we're all somewhere along this continuum of energized and engaged all the way down to being completely burned out like we're somewhere on that continuum at all times and so it's it's important to be able to check in with ourselves and 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 not blame ourselves, but recognize that in some ways it's a product of our circumstance and the fact that we have been trying to push forward without the proper resources. Um, and this this reminds me quickly of another instance. I remember early in my marriage, um, my husband is a distance runner and he loves, uh, you know, he, marathons and ultra marathons and things like that. I was a sprinter in high school and I would always tell my husband, you know, I, I'm just not a distance person. I can't do that. And then, and he started asking me, um, how much sleep have you gotten? Did you, did you eat anything? Did you drink anything? And I realized that when I was defining myself as someone <clears throat> who could not do distance running, I, I hadn't, eaten for eight hours. I didn't bring water with me. I was often sleep deprived, you know, and so that's just not fair. And a lot of times we're not being fair to ourselves when we're judging ourselves harshly when this exhaustion, this cynicism, this discouragement creeps up. 
Oh, you just hit a really good spot that some people might be recognizing <laughs> in this conversation. That's such a big one. You know, we have these expectations. We have these social norms. We have these internal expectations that we have created for ourselves based on what we perceive or think other people expect of us. And we don't stop to check in with what I know <laughs> myself, you know, like they say, you can't kill the caregiver. They say, put your oxygen mask on first before you put your child's on, on the airplane. I mean, we know these things. It's not like we're not aware of it, but are we applying it? <laughs> this is the question. Are we sleeping? Are we drinking some water? You know, have we eaten in the last eight hours? And I think, you know, that story that you share of your experience, and thank you so much for sharing that so openly and vulnerably, Mary, because that's a tough moment when all of these things, it's like the perfect storm has come together in this one moment for you where you know, and I think we have to also look at how do we define ourselves in our role? Because it's sometimes that definition that gets us in a place where we're not looking at our own nourishment needs. And I think that happens a lot in healthcare providers, more so maybe I think than the overall popula population. And then when we're really talking about women in healthcare, we're really amping up that that perspective. What are some of your thoughts on that, Mary? Yes, it is just, it's pretty astounding to look at some of the data that um, the suicide rate among physicians is two to three times that of the normal population, and, and that's higher in women. Um, so many times we have just unrealistic expectations of ourselves, and and we're trying to perform superhuman feats and and kind of run on empty and run and run and run. And it's just like we said before, it's not sustainable. So, so I would love to share some ways that I think that we can begin addressing burnout. And as I kind of thought about a framework for this, you know, you look at the whole debate online and, and with different um, people in the burnout space. And some people are really talking about, oh, it's a broken system. And some people are saying, oh, you know, we need to just do all this inner work. And I really think that you can't just exclusively do one or the other. You know, we would never look at a friend in a toxic relationship and say, you just need to do inner work. Just just do inner work, you know. Um, we always have to address the systems. So that's external to us ourselves. Then we do have to do the inner work, the, the self-care, learning how to implement even micro renewal practices in our lives so it is sustainable. It doesn't, renewal and self-care doesn't have to take more time necessarily. Although sometimes it is necessary to pause and rest in a more intentional way. Um, and then also there's this interplay between external and internal, and that's how we interface with our external world. And, and I think what's really important in that, at that edge, is recognizing that we have say, that we have a voice and we have more decisions to make and more power than we realize. Um, and there are certain things that can be non-negotiables for us. Um, for example, uh, you know, one thing that has helped um, prevent professional burnout in my life is I've, I've usually been really good at setting firm boundaries to allow me to keep my priorities with my family as I have young kids. And, you know, recently, about six years ago, I moved to a smaller community. I had moved from the big city of Minneapolis where I was doing moonlighting and hospitalist work. Um, and then I came to this smaller area where there wasn't part-time work. And I was offered a position in you know, the main pediatric practice in town. They had a lunch for me. They were like, yay, meet Dr. Mary Wild. And then when they found out that I just wanted to work part-time and I wasn't gonna budge on that, then they had to say, we're sorry. And I had to say, um, Okay, well, thank you for the lunch, but 
and I it, I ended up making you know opening my own practice because I I wanted to create something that fit my life and my value system and that honored my balance. Um, so I think there, you know, these three things, there's this addressing systems, addressing the interface between external and internal. And, and one of the main areas is just recognizing the say that we do have. And then the third is the inner work, which I like to think of as finding sanctuary. Um, so there are like three S's there of systems and then say, recognizing that we have say and and then sanctuary, finding sanctuary where we can really renew ourselves and um, become unencumbered, untangled, unwound, and then really return to our life's work so much better. Oh gosh, yes. And, and Mary, you talk about things and, and you and I are so much in line and of the same heart around this addressing of how do we become energy masters? And it really is about our energy mastery. And, you know, you do something that I just love. I, I talk about just doing these little nano vacations, these little nano mm -hmm. breaks. Um, and I, I think that that's one thing that gets in the way sometimes when people think about how do I recharge? You know, it has to be like this big giant thing, but you do something that you hand out and share called your micro moments, your micro mm -hmm. recharge. Share some of that, that concept with us. Like yes. why micro? Well, it's, it's funny because when I was initially introduced to this concept of micro renewal, I was um, in Minneapolis and I went to this hair studio. It was the Aveda Hair Institute. And, and they said, you know, we have, um, what did they call it? Something like rituals of renewal. I think they said, you get to choose a ritual of renewal as you're here. Would you like a cup of tea or would you like a head massage or would you like, you know, um, a, a really quick manicure? Um, and so, and I, I actually like almost started crying because it was in this time of high burnout just to have someone offer me just a couple minutes of care, it really made a difference. And so I, I've thought a lot about the fact that we have to find ways to implement it in our daily living. We Sometimes we can't pause. Sometimes we need to pause, but sometimes we can't. And um, so I have some different micro renewal practices that I teach. And I have actually like a, a micro renewal card deck that I've created for physicians. And, and I'll just share one of the things. Um, it is a one breath meditation from Thich Nhat Hanh. And it's just saying, as I breathe in, I'm breathing in. As I breathe out, I'm breathing out. And I love that because it's just like connecting to the moment, connecting to the breath, which we always have with us. And it's just, just getting to the simple Zen presence of it is what it is. And, and so just in one breath, we can change our state. And so that's just one example. But um, I also think, you know, sometimes we really need to take a little bit of a longer time and give ourselves a pause. I know that um, I have a friend in the wellness space and she sent me an email recently. And in the, the, her closing, she, she said, pause, the world can wait and then signed her name. And, and I, I just loved that because sometimes we think the world can't wait, the, the world can't get along without us for just a second while we, you know, pause and breathe and recharge, but um, it can, and it will be better for it as we return in a renewed state. I also think of ships um, at sea, how they get barnacles on them. And, and sometimes all they need to do is find fresh water and the barnacles fall off. Whereas if you don't go to fresh water and you stay only in the marine water, you have to like scrape and jackhammer barnacles off. I mean, they're like tenacious and, and they cause a boat to have a lot more drag and, and require a lot more fuel. 
and so be much less efficient. And I think that's a good metaphor. Um, so what I'd love to do is invite all the physicians within the sound of this, this broadcast to an upcoming retreat that we have in Southern Utah. So we are going to be hiking at Zion National Park. We're gonna do yoga in the canyon. We're going to practice mindfulness with a mindfulness teacher that has studied with, you know, John Kabat-Zinn and Deepak Chopra and all, all these big gurus um, are going to be having writing workshops. And bonus, you get 10 CME credits. <laughs> so it's like one of those double whammies, but um, it's a total, totally um, MD faculty and it's just for three days. So um, I really invite you to, to extend that message to yourself of pause, the world can wait and do what you need to do to recharge yourself so you can actually show up and savor the world as you're saving it in your own sphere, because I really don't think it has to be a dichotomy. Let's find a way to do both. Oh, absolutely. And this beautiful retreat is coming up on March 21st through the 23rd. The links will be down in the show notes so that you can go get your ticket. Go ahead and take that pause. The world can wait. It absolutely can. And when you invest in yourself, and the renewal from micro all the way up to those bigger moments, it all comes back to you. And it is about your energy mastery and your well-being. Mary, thank you so much for joining us here today. How can people connect with you on LinkedIn, Instagram? Where can they go find you to follow and learn more about the amazing things that you teach and burn out? Thank you. So I can be found on Instagram at Dr. Mary Wild, D-R-M-A-R-Y-W-I-L-D-E, and also at drmarywild.com. Fantastic. Y'all go connect with Mary. She is fabulous. She is one of my peeps in the world that I absolutely adore. And if you are in healthcare, if you're a physician and guys, those CMEs, those are gold. This is like the best way to go get not only your recharge, but to get those CMEs, because you know, we all got to have those little things every year as they're doing our credentialing things. We got to have them. So here you go. You can do it and get some bang for your buck because this is one of the most affordable retreats and the quality of the things that are going to be happening at this retreat. Holy cow. I cannot tell you, this is such an immense value. Mary, you've put together an incredible retreat and I can't wait for everyone to join you. Thanks so much for being here. Make sure you connect with Dr. Mary Wild and join me next week for another conversation going deeper into burnout and our energy mastery. Take care.